Happy weekend, folks. All right. Been working on some camera mounts here so I can try to improve the quality of what I'm doing. One of them you'll see right here. Um, just the camera screws right on here and looks straight down. So you'll see it being used in this video, or me, I'm using it in the video. And next Fridays, uh, hopefully I can show making this guy, which is a tripod mount, where the camera will be out here on the end. So I can try to get in closer to show the machining that's going on. So, but um, today's video, I'm just going to add a bit going to finally show a comparison of chamfering tools that I have and how they work. But since this video is so short, uh, I decided to share some footage that I've had kicking around in the background. To a lot of you, it's probably going to mean nothing. It's mainly for people of my generation where during the bachelor days we used to live on TV dinners so uh, I'll explain it in the opening but I hope you guys enjoy and see you next Friday all right a little bit of a background here um, back in the bachelor days yeah I used to live on TV dinners difference was back then you used to add things like Worcestershire sauce and real butter to make it edible but so for some reason, the other night, a couple of nights ago, my wife and I were talking about it. And tonight is ladies' night out, so she's gone. And to my surprise, she brought me a TV dinner. And I just looked at this box like, you know, they used to be a lot bigger than this. What is this anyway? This is like, what? This is miniature. This is crazy. So we now have it at eight and a half inches by six and a quarter. Um, <coughs> I can't believe that. That's that's wild. But you know, I don't know what this is. I've never seen it before, so I don't know actually what's going to happen. But I'm just kind of looking at it, reading this, and it says must be cooked thoroughly. Why? That's scary. I don't get that. Uh, gravy, Salisbury steak made with chicken, pork, and beef, you know, creamy mashed potatoes, like, okay, fine. Cinnamon apple dessert. Grill marks added. I wonder how they added the grill marks. That's crazy. But even on the back, I'm looking at this. Cut and remove film from dessert. Microwave on high for six to seven and a half minutes. I don't know anything that survives in a microwave that long. And then you got to check to make it sure it's cooked thoroughly to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. They warned me twice to make sure it's cooked thoroughly. Scary. I and mean, it's also amazing on YouTube. Any, any subject you want to find, it's there. Somebody already reviewed this thing. So I kind of know, I, I don't know, it's not the greatest review, but uh, my opinion, sorry. I don't know what this thing's going to look like. This is crazy. But yeah, back then I had a microwave and they used to come in those tin trays, which you couldn't put in a microwave. So I had to like dump it out on a regular plate and then nuke it and microwave it. There's a film on this? There's no film on that. They say remove the film on that, but there's a film on the whole thing, so go figure. Uh, this is definitely kind of frozen here. I think I can count the number of corn peas here. Gravy, potatoes, so... Uh, this six... What did it say? Holy cow. I think it was six and a half. I'm looking at the box right now. There it is. Six to seven and a half minutes, huh? And then I got to put a temperature probe in there. Well, let's see what happens. We're at 2 minutes, 15 seconds, and it's just bubbling in there. So I'm going to leave the microphone down and go over there and see what happens here because this is crazy. Whoa. Oh, Jeez. oh man. Steam coming out. That sucker is hot. 
plastic is going to melt. <laughs> uh, this is definitely cooked. I can't even pick it up. Alright. <laughs> I can't pick this thing up, so I need to let it cool down for a minute. Can't believe it. I put it back in there. It's got two minutes to go. The Salisbury steak is still icy cold. All the gravy's boiling over. So I put a paper plate on it now because the napkin just goes right into it. So why, why, why is the steak icy cold that everything else is hot? So I got one minute to go. No, one and a half here. Well, let's see what happens. Maybe I have to go seven, seven and a half minutes. All right, that's six minutes. So I'm leaving the mic again. See what it is. Uh, uh, oh, didn't splatter. In. Yeah, I did some. All right, yeah. Mm, okay, me hot. <laughs> it got hot at six minutes. <laughs> well, is it thoroughly hot? I don't know. But it kind of burned my finger if I would have left it in there. It's definitely hot on the outside. The meat got hot. So, I don't know. Uh, I guess I'll try it out and see what happens. And if you don't see another video, that means I didn't cook it thoroughly. Alright, I'm hoping this will work out. A new camera mount camera is now problem is the light is above the camera so this is a bad shadow for me but I'm looking in the camera and it looks pretty good and the camera is what nine inches off the bench all right well chamfering tools there are a lot of different ones that you can use this particular one was the first one I bought five years ago it's a Niagara cutter 76600 carbide 90 degrees I bought it off of Amazon paid $20 it's now 30 I'll put a link in the description to it for flute and this was the first one I bought and I had bought it because I needed to get into these little tight spots here to try to you know I can remember again I'm new so I'm I didn't know what to buy or to do, so I'm figuring, all right, let's just start here. I needed to kind of get in tight into the corner. Um, also, thinking about it, you guys, um, this was made some five years ago, and it's been used a lot. So if you want to see the wear on aluminum, yeah, it's scratched up, but it's still cranking like crazy. Um... So that was one of the first ones that I made. So that um, I still use today when I, gotta, I have to get into a real tight corner. Um, so again, I'll put a link in the description to it if you want to guys want to get it. This was the second one that I picked up and I have no idea where it came from. Um, it just says half inch by three eighths, high speed steel, 45 degree doesn't even say where it's made India China or anything this has been for the longest time my main chamfering tool and remember too um, the difference between chamfer and bevel if you have a part that's coming out like that bevel is you're cutting it all the way to the corner chamfer is you just breaking the sharp edge to some number so this was my main guy uh, I still use it it does um, leave ripples or whatever in the finish which is minor I think all of them probably are going to do that but still use it happy with it can't go too deep with it so at some point and I think these guys also came off of Amazon even though I can't find them now in my orders, um, one inch, 45 degree, high speed steel, and it says India on it. I think it's probably upside down for you guys, but if you can read it. Um, had bought this figuring, oh great, you know, I'll be able to do some pretty heavy, deep chamfering. 
learned what chatter was real quick, let me tell you so. Um, this does give a slightly better finish than this one. So I do use this quite often nowadays. And I did buy the 60 degree because it kind of gives a, a different look and angle when you're chamfering. And both these guys, I can go pretty heavy before it starts really chattering uh, to mess up the finish. None of these two, conventional milling always gives a terrible finish. Climb milling, a nice finish. And I'm actually getting better finishes with these four guys uh, using the power feed because your hand isn't jerking the wheel around or the whole table. So, so these were my sets for a long time here. And now just recently, I picked up off of Banggood, I did show it in the last video, this set. I think it was $6 or something like that. Um, this is now my favorite set, even though I've only used this one. I think I did use this one, but you saw this one in use in the last video, um, making the table clamp for the uh, mill, the CNC mill. Um, very sharp. I'm very impressed. They are three flutes, right? Yeah, one, two, three. I did manage to try to get this, you know, these edges flat on a diamond stone and then just swipe it once. And it, I don't know whether there was a burr or not. It feels sharper. But in these other ones, you know, it's that's a very tough angle and trying to hold it by hand to do that so it's I risk damaging these guys and not being able to sharpen it I will put a link to these guys in the description Oop, out of order um, this is now my favorite set I'm using this or will be using this all the time from now on uh, eventually I'd love to get one of those professional sharpeners here some kind of noise going on behind me, kind of spooky. So um, I picked this up, bang good. I love this set. I recommend it. Um, also, at the same time, I picked up this guy, <laughs> monstrous. I thought it would do a good job. I tried it with the aluminum insert, my favorite ones that I have for the face mill on it. Terrible finish, absolutely terrible. Um, then I tried it on 1018 with the steel inserts and no good at all. So um, it's also monstrous here to be holding it. I never thought about the length. If it did a nice job, boy, that would be a pain to cut this thing down because I don't just don't have the height on the machine to do anything with this. So these are the basic... Um, tools, cutters that I have to do chamfering with. A lot of times too, if I gotta go real deep, uh, you've seen in the video, I'll just angle the stock, put it on an angle block, and then just go at it with an end mill and go as deep as I want, even all the way down to a bevel if I want to. So now let me try to see what I can do to show you guys the finishes that you can get with all of these all right oh good there record zooming in with this camera yeah i can definitely see the uh edge now this is the very first um chamfer tool that i showed that little small carbide guy um and keep in mind before making the cut i take uh you bring the tool over now where is it? There it is. <laughs> I um, pretty much so come on center. I'll set the edge. Ooh, this is hard to do. Set the edge right about there on center with this cutter. Or with all the cutters to do it. So that's the first one. Um, the second finish is... Oh, I put him away. Take him back out. <laughs> Take both these guys out. Okay, this is this. this is the second guy that I used um, again set it for the center uh, this is a taller part so I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get this edge right 
yeah oh there it is now all of them do this you cannot feel that ripple effect or whatever you want to call it with your fingernail your finger anything and when you hit it with scotch bright um, it's gone so then the next one up I'll show the cutter in a minute but I did the other side this is the other one you can see it is slightly better can I get a bad angle on it not really so this this one like I said did a pretty good job that's this guy right here um, and like I said too I'm pretty sure this came on Amazon and I'm thinking it did because the regular dovetail cutters that I use for um, making those tool holders for the lathe the 60 and the 45 I know without a doubt came off of Amazon and they look pretty much so like this then for the last cutter here which is the one I showed this guy yeah, this is kind of nice getting a real good close-up view of these things so you can see them that edge is doing the cutting that edge is doing the cutting and that edge is doing so they all have dust on them they're all these edges are cutting which is surprising and that was done I'm gonna take this knob off of this thing there you can see my knurling <laughs> um, all these edges making this camera holder thing come on off there off these were all done with the new one any bad angle dust on it so it's pretty nice you know here I'm super super magnified looking at this but when you look at it with the eye I I like this finish so it's it's pretty nice to do and then oh, for whatever it's worth that's the finish which you can't yeah I can feel that that's done with the face mill that you guys saw all of this was done with the face mill so that's just pretty much so the finishes that you get and I can lap this gone in two seconds and I can also do it uh, with scotch bright in the drill press well that's kind of it guys so I hope you enjoyed um, looking at that any of the other finishes and some way zoomed in <laughs> pretty cool the camera's focusing nicely here that would be just facing operation so boy it feels like glass though to me all right so i hope you guys enjoyed thought i'd just kind of shoot this to show you guys just how much this is magnified in and here comes the trash man great also just wanted to show this was the chatter to making this part here and that would be a scotch bright finish there what it looks like it's not focusing too well this time for some reason and then a dovetail i showed and there's a video on making that little cutter for this thing boy boy he needs new brakes huh? <laughs> so i showed a video on making the dovetail cutter and this is the result of how it comes came out so 